My name is Ibn Shofki. I'm a technical um, system engineer. And today we're going to talk about the new product from DataCore, DataCore VDS. So all the participants are in mute. So um, if you do have some questions, please type in a chat box and we'll try to uh, reply at the end. So um, basically, this PowerPoint presentation um, will be split in two parts. The first part is uh, PowerPoint driven, and the last part will be um, demo driven. So um, if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to type your questions. This session is recorded, so you will receive a link uh, from um, our marketing, so you will receive soon a link. And if you are interested to test the product, uh, please tell me uh, at the end by email and uh, you will receive a NFR for 90 days. So, um, sometimes when we talk about um, VDI projects, we talk about mainly um, two big names, um, which are VMware and Citrix. And sometimes the, those um, projects are associated with big number of uh, virtual desktops to uh, deploy. So uh, you think about um, when you do have a VMware, for instance, you do have need a composer, a view manager, a ray, the ray with powerful when you, when you uh, have your clones and desktops. But when you talk about Citrix, it's the same. So you need some advanced servers, you need to send desktops and links and share. So everything seems to be and all for bigger customer. So um, what we've done with DataCore, we released a product we could fit with SMB market and very small, medium and and uh, bigger market. So um, DataCore obviously has not changed our view in terms of uh, storage virtualization. We're going to use our power and experience on virtualization on disks, on servers, to put the same approach on PCs. This is where DataCorp will bring you another tool in your toolbox. It's the VDI, Virtual Desktop Infrastructure. So tra traditionally, when we talk about uh, VDI offers, are sometimes complex and costly. Why? Because you need a need shared storage, you need a SAN, you need performance. So um, obviously uh, we talk about 500 desktops and more, and it could be very expensive and very easy um, to set up, not probably for a small customer, but it could be easy for a bigger customer. So um, what DataCore um, thought was, okay, we've got a great experience into how to provide virtual disks, how to provide performance, how to enhance IOs. So this is why we've decided to uh, launch a new product called VDS on the market only for small and mid-sized companies. We've got um, tools uh, for 50, VDS, 100, and 200 workstations, okay? So we are not limited technically to 200, but it's the way we want to position ourselves. We don't want to compete against the VMware or Citrix. What we need to do is a VDI for smaller companies, okay? So this is why um, we've launched the new product in March called DataCore VDS for virtual desktop servers. But this uh, VDS is designed around uh, what we do best, i.e. enhancing performance on disks, on IOs, in cache. So for uh, VDS will be designed mainly for SMB markets, and it will be economical and stateful virtual desktops. So basically, we give you a architecture which is unique with performance, all in the box, 
and manage with the VDI solutions on the market. So, um, before we go further, um, we would like to do uh, a quarter about a data core. As our CEO, Jeff Texera, told us, we are not moving away from our core business. So basically, uh, San Tessany will be still our main business core. But Data Core VDS is a new uh, tool for um, small and medium business for VDI solutions. So VDS is a new product and orientated um, to SMB market. So what is a data core VDS? So you will pick and choose as per usual your server you like. It could be an IBM, it could be a Dell, it could be um, an HP, it could be a Fujitsu, a NEC. Then you will put some uh, CPUs, some RAM, some um, um, network cards, and some disks. Okay. Then you put together the hardware, then you install on top of it the two main components, data core, VDS, and Windows Server Hyper-V. So basically on the same server, you add up some physical CPUs, RAM, disks, network cards, and you install Windows Server with Hyper-V and data core VDS. And then, as per usual, we, we are turning this Windows server as a VDS server. So what we're going to do, we're going to emulate the capability to run RDP. So we can run as many RDPs you want. Okay. So uh, basically, in terms of licensing, uh, you need to have either a VDS 50 or 50 VDIs. VDS 100 or VDS 200. Then once you've installed data core VDS and enabled the virtual the machines, what we're going to do, we're going to administrate via an easy to set up a VDS tool first. Okay, it's a wizard. Then you, you will administrate on a web portal. So this web portal will administrate not only a local VDS, but all the VDS in your region. So, a VDS is a powerful, stateful desktop solution. So basically, we are persistent. So you're going to do a template with your virtual uh, machine. Okay, you can have multi virtual machines. Then, per each user, we're going to assign a snapshot of this virtual machine. So it means each virtual machine will be unique in terms of state and the, um, we will be in a persistent mode. So basically when you deploy a virtual machine to a user, this user virtual machine will be persistent. So if you install PackOffice or Adobe um, and you reboot and reboot and reboot this virtual machine, you will still have your desktop and all the applications installed on this virtual machine. So basically, you have a central point, which is your uh, VHD, your template. Then we will deploy many, many virtual machines out of this um, virtual machine as a template. So um, Data Core is using our knowledge about simple and fast install then we're going to turn a Windows server as a, a Windows uh, stroke VBS server. And we can use our internal architecture about IOs, performance, caching, and many more to turn into a very powerful video uh, desktop computing server. So um, data core performance over the past 15 years is all about performance with a cache, with a DAM, I.O., CPU, but also the thin provisioning and space saving snapshots and everything to reduce the cost of the hardware. And you will see at the end the minimum requirements. And every time we run this um, session, people are fairly amazed about 
the minimum requirements needed because um, when you compare view and uh, everything in Xenap related, you expect many more in terms of technology, in terms of power, in terms of disks. But with us, we are capable to do more with less hardware. So the VDS tool is an easy uh, way to create and set up the virtual disks and of course virtual disk desktops. So if you are familiar with uh, our terminology, it will be easy to dip into it. So basically this is the main GUI you will see. The data core VDS console, where you see here, you can create virtual disks into pools. So you will present us some raw disks or lens, create a pool, then out of it, we will create, first of all, the VDI source image, okay? So this VDI source image could be um, held or we can recycle already an Hyper-V source image or you can create a virtual machine and turn it to a template or you can start from scratch from our GUI. The next will be create VTI clones. So um, this is what we're going to show in a minute. Then you can delete VDI clones if you don't want to use it, the virtual machines anymore for virtual desktops. And you can also reset the VDI clones easily. And also here, you can monitor and change the VDI clone, and also here you can monitor your VDI. So uh, in terms of GUI, this is the next step. You click on Next for VDI clone, then you will see the licenses, okay? So you got 50 license, 100 license, or 200 um, license. In this case, we've got 200 here. Of course, we've got no um, desktops deployed yet, and of course, um, if I've got a license of 200 and none deployed, I could be uh, deploying uh, 200. Then they ask me how many VDI clones you want to deploy. Then you will have the choice for source images. So we can hold many source images for your virtual desktops. Okay? So uh, then you choose on which storage pool. Okay? So another name which are pretty familiar with the data core people using it. So um, then you need to rename the VDI clones, okay? So you give a name and of course the number, the name will start from. Then we'll give you the minimum requirements. So uh, sometimes when we run this session, people are asking us why 512? Because if you see the minimum requirements from Hyper-V virtual machines, the uh, virtual desktops are 512 megabytes, okay? So of course you can go beyond the minimum, but the minimum is 512. Then you choose the location for the VRDI clone, so obviously you need to pick and choose the right path. And if you do have a setup a virtual network, please tell us if it's private network one, two, or else. Then after the creation of the VDI, do you want the virtual desktops starting automatically and uh, um, what is the delay between two virtual desktops to start with? Then um, we run our wizard. It, it takes about less than five minutes to, uh, to launch more than 50 virtual desktops. So you will see in a minute. So it's very powerful because no, uh, nobody in the market can enable and deliver so many virtual machines in uh, till a little time. And it's fairly comprehensive in terms of caching, IO, RAM, CPU, and snapshot uh, capability. Then once it's finished, all virtual disks, all the virtual machines are enabled. Then the next step is to add them into the portal. So this is an example um, for a data core, but of course you can um, add your own pictures, you can add your own fancy um, new uh, tabs and columns, but I want to show you the basic. So basically you will have two portals. The first one is for the admin, the, the, the second portal is for the user. So um, I will show you first the um, admin, where you've got the uh, VDS and VDI administration, 
So in this uh, section here, you will add all the VDI newly created. Here you, um, you can add the VDIs into portals because this administration um, web portal can obviously administra administrate the local portal but also remote portals. So I will show you in a minute. Here is the section of the user management. So this is where you create your users, your company, and you give rights to your users. And here is where you add features of the web portal and um, also sending email to all participants uh, for um, this uh, video portal session. So the first you have to you need to register your visit a VDF portal and once it's done it's fairly simple you need to put the IP address and the name and it, it will be added. Then what you need to do is how many VDI desktops will be added? Okay, so you need to add the number uh, you've just created. What is the base virtual machine name? What is the starting number? What is the RDP or firewall? So now usually it's 3389. Then submit. So all the virtual machine or virtual desktops created will be introduced into the VDS portal. Then you will see all the virtual desktops ready, but not assigned yet. You see uh, two virtual desktops are assigned to um, Christian uh, Mark Linke. The next one is to uh, add a portal or add portals. So you give a name, location, uh, host name, and the IP address. And the videos portal admin will link up with the video server. So everything is, um, can be all inclusive in the same VDS server. So sometimes you see some uh, like VDS for, um, or from uh, Microsoft, although it's VDI in a box from Citrix. But uh, you need VMs to enable this and that in terms of services. With our solution, all is in the box. So it means it's very cost effective. So once the VDS portal is enabled, you create a company. So we have created a company called Datacore and another company called Nuco. And um, from the same portal, you can administrate both companies. Then once it's done, you create a new user. So add a new user and you um, add a new user. You can edit and change the name, add VDI on a fly and you will see you will see the new um, VDI's um, uh, workstations assigned per um, account. Then once it's assigned, this is what you're going to see. So uh, I'm looking at a user. This is the user profile. And I see my two virtual machines. And uh, both, one is power workstation, and another one is standard workstation. So as you can see, a profile can have many virtual desktops assigned to it. And you can run as RDP this way through the web or through RDP session directly. So in terms of web portal to access it, you may need either Microsoft um, laptop or desktop or a thin client having a capability to RDP. It could be uh, a thin client or it could be anything related like an iPad or like if you have a pocket wise if you want. So um, once you are connected uh, from the web, this is what you see. This is the web portal. So you log in uh, as per usual and you can work with your persistent uh, workstation. So uh, this product was released in March, so uh, last month. Um, we've uh, got selected partners already. Uh, you're part of it because you received the invitation. Um, end of April, um, we will have a uh, web um, training available to um, install and how to manage, okay? And to give you a rough price, the uh, starting price is under 6,000 
um, dollars, which is 5,500, I believe, a euro for 50 virtual desktops. So our licenses are not based on storage anymore, but on virtual desktops. Okay. So uh, in terms of pricing, um, as, as I can tell already, uh, the um, discount based on the um, trainings, schools, or public sectors so you can apply your discount on VDF um, as well as Phantom 20V. So, um, of course, um, um, you can ask your local representative for further information for pricing. But um, um, DataCore as a main message is we wanted to create a simple and fast and easy to use VDF server for VDI for small and medium business. And we don't need to build high spec storage fan with a lot of gateways, broken composers and everything. With our tool, everything is all in the box and data call as per usual will enhance the speed through caching, through IO performance, read your head, um, um, uh, write cache, and of course, have a state persistent virtual desktops. So as a guideline, um, you will see a section on our data core website about best practice, guideline, but this is uh, to you guys, uh, data core VDS uh, 50 license. Um, we need one server, uh, six core with 48 gig of RAM, uh, based, of course, of 512 megabytes per VDI. Um, we can use two SATA drives for the OS, but if you want to use uh, SAS, go for it. Uh, for the data, uh, it was a 4 times 300 gig uh, SAS drive, and um, of course, if you want to put template on all a SAS drive or SSDs, even, it's going to be faster. And um, you need two ports, gigabit for one for the management port and one for the VDI. Um, I think it takes about 50 kilobytes, uh, the uh, network, so it's very, very small. Then if you want the VDS 100, um, 6 core, 96 uh, gig of RAM, uh, 300 gig of SAS, uh, 5 times, and 128 gig of RAM for 200. So as you can see, the specs are not tremendous, but data core will enhance the speed through our methodology, caching over CPUs, RAM, and disk. So this is why uh, it's very focused on SMB market. So I'll leave you um, a few seconds um, to type your questions. And what I'm going to do, I, I'm going to uh, jump into um, the demo session um, while you're typing all the questions. So um, this is the uh, demo uh, center, which is based in uh, Germany. So um, you will see I may have a uh, keyboard problem, uh, despite having the French keyboard. So this is a Windows 2008. Um, I could have done a 2012, but um, this is a 2008 R2. And I've got a 96 uh, gig um, of um, RAM. And um, I will uh, show you Hyper-V. I've got no virtual machines right now or virtual desktops. And I will um, go into a state where I will create those um, virtual desktops. So first of all, uh, on this server, I've got everything installed, local drives, VDS, Hyper-V, and I double click on VDS. So this is the first console you will see. So as I said, you can create the config volume. Uh, I do have already one, which is uh, the dynamic pool one. But um, as per usual, when you start, you've been asked to create uh, V-disks where you hold all the the uh, images that are later on the uh, virtual desktops. So this is here when you can, um, for the VDI, the source image, you can create a source from um, actual VHD. You can uh, create a source from an existing virtual machine. Or here, you can start from scratch. So I've done um, already to save time a virtual desktop. 
and as a virtual machine. So I will create a clone uh, from scratch. So first, next, no new virtual machines, 200 license, zero deployed. Okay, so let's deploy five virtual desktops. Okay, then I've got many uh, virtual machines as templates. So let's use the user PC. Okay, then click on next. Then, um, if you have the choice of many pools, you will have a drop down menu. Many pools, I've got one pool only, so dynamic pool. Then, here, um, you can reclaim the uh, naming convention. Here, I've got nothing uh, to reclaim from, so I will create. So, I'm calling it webinar. And the uh, starting of the virtual clones will start on number one. And I click on next. The next one is the VDI clone memory. Okay, so as I said, the 512 is the minimum recommended for uh, Microsoft. So you can go beyond, of course, but um, for the time being, I'm going to use uh, 512. And uh, I leave as a default for the location. So you can choose uh, what you want. Okay, uh, you've got the clone, config, or images. And um, um, you have got two network, uh, private, the two and a four, so um, I used the two. And here, um, you can start the VDI or the virtual desktops, and how many seconds between the desktops, in my case, 30 seconds, and start. Then, as you can see, the data core starts automatically, so it's 27. And we start uh, the process, and eventually you will see here all the five um, virtual desktops here registered into the Hyper-V. In the meantime, uh, while the data core is uh, working, what I do is I go into uh, the web portal, well, as an admin, and I will create a user. This user will be used to um, access the uh, database. Obviously, and um, and um, assign virtual machine. So I've created a count. Okay, fairly easy. Then here you see the VDS, the list, the edit. First of all, I will create my account. Okay, so I click on account. As you can see, I've got many accounts created, but I need to create a new one. Okay, let's call it test. Okay. Test Paris Paris. So this is mm -hmm. one, this is one thing. Um, th this is one thing uh, you need to uh, remember. So everything was driven around um, around the um, US format. So you need to um, put a, a state, even if you don't. Um, Live in US, so pick one if you can see Florida or Alabama, whatever. So um, Paris, okay. A phone number, so I take a bogus one. Email, so test. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so this is my um, problem I've got with my French keyboard. Um, okay, test at datacore.com. Okay, and I assign a password. Okay, and the company data call, and I enable this. Okay, so I've got the account created um, called um, test, and let's see where we are with the data call deployment. So, uh, okay, we started two minutes ago, still nothing. But it it will be very fast. Now um, um, let's check again this um, password just in case. Okay. Okay, and uh, submit. So um, when I um, log in, okay, so uh, to make sure this account works. So uh, free. It was. Test. Wait. Test. OK. 
Okay, it's, um, I don't know why, but uh, for some reason my hat is not working as expected. Um, datacore.com and the password I have newly created. And as you can see, uh, my, my profile is here, but I've got uh, nothing um, right now associated. So uh, let's take a look here. And as you can see, the virtual machines are being created and they're automatically here loaded and they will be started also automatically um, by Hyper-V. So um, they, they are a capability within um, Hyper-V already creating um, virtual desktops. However, um, you need uh, four servers to manage it. Web server, you need um, another one for the IT directory, you need um, a lot of things for the for the composer, the broker. Um, it's not the case for um, for Datacore. So everything can uh, stay in the same box. In the background here, you see it running. So basically, we do have a partial running because we took a snapshot, as you can see here, from the the source the source um, uh, VHD. So this um, um, PowerShell script will change the name and join the domain or the active directory. So this is what, when we start for the first time, we enable it, change the name, and reboot, and it will be automatically um, change the name, join the region, and everything. So um, this is, um, it took us four minutes to, um, to uh, load four uh, DDS, but in the meantime, what I will do, I will assign uh, those uh, virtual desktops um, to, my, um, to my test, okay? So I need to log in into my um, admin account, okay? Then here, I will say, okay, I need to add my virtual machines, okay? So it's called webinar, okay? Webinar, and uh, sorry, how many machines? Five. The name is webinar, okay? We start at one, and the port is this, or make sure the firewall is um, enabled. Then submit, okay? So now I can list all my five virtual machines running into my uh, VDS portal. Now what I will do, I will assign two ways. The, um, first of all, I make sure I've got a valid uh, VDS server. Then here, I will see my, uh, I can um, either assign this webinar one to um, a VDI owner this way, drop down and I see my test. Or a faster way um, is to assign here, go to user management, then go to test, add video, then you can add all of them in one go. So this way, uh, my profile test will have five virtual machine running and um, it will be uh, very, very um, easy to manage from the GUI point of view. So um, this way, I will um, log in again because I believe I was logged out. Okay, so test. Come on. Test at data core. Com, then my password, and I see all my five virtual machines assigned to my account. Now, um, in order to um, access it, you can click on this webinar, uh, one, connect, and you will see straight away here. So if I type the right password, I believe this is this one, and you do have your, um, your desktop, okay? So um, this is your um, desktop, so you can have either through this um, web portal 
or if you are using um, RDP, okay? So if I take webinar one, as you can see, I will have the logon to uh, log in to the, the virtual machine. So um, this is, uh, you've got the virtual machine running. As you can see, of course, uh, there's not much low workload, but um, there's no much um, usage right now. So in terms of um, admin, the, uh, the possibility to um, also uh, reuse it. So um, this is the portal, this is the email notice uh, notification, so you can send an email to, and subject, you've got also the HTML, you've got the um, edit, so we, you, we've got uh, many uh, targets uh, for you to play with, you can add your pictures and everything, and uh, the uh, company management, so this is where you create the company and uh, enable the company. So um, this is from the web portal, which is very important here is, um, as you can see, you've got my um, five virtual machines uh, running, five virtual desktops. Now, I want to uh, stop four of them because um, people don't want those anymore. So I um, turn off um, from the Hyper-V management, so the four virtual machines, then I can totally delete the clones, okay? So um, what you can do is delete clones. Okay, so sorry, I've got, okay. So delete clones, next. Then I want to delete winner one to four, okay? So I want to delete four virtual um, clones, webinar, next. Are you sure you want to delete webinar one to four? Because obviously you cannot um, regain the data. And as you can see, delete, yes, and all the, the, the virtual machines are gone straight away, bang. So all the, the virtual um, desktops are totally uh, gone. And um, now uh, you've got just the webinar five left. So um, this is how powerful this tool is. So you can add on a fly, reset on a fly, and also uh, once it's uh, finished, you can also uh, reset totally. Um, like if you put data on the uh, webinar, so um, if you put the data on number five and you want to reset it, you got reset clone, next webinar on number five, are you sure? Yes. Of course, I need to turn off first because uh, resetting means um, I want to start from scratch, fresh, are you sure, reset. And as, as you can see, is fairly instantaneous because enabling snapshot, finish and done. So in a few seconds, we start again um, from a fresh webinar five. So it's a very powerful tool and um, of course, uh, it's um, cache enhanced speed enhanced. So uh, this is my um, my demo, my webinar. So um, I hope I do have some questions, and uh, please type your, in the chat box your questions. Um, don't forget to send me an email if you want to test the product. I will we have far for 90 days. And of April, uh, we will have a uh, online uh, training. So in order to be certified, you will be online on the web. It will be one day. And um, of course, um, it's um, open to uh, all the partners uh, selling data call. And of course, if you want to have even more performance, you could have as the virtual disks inside the VDS some virtual disks coming from Content Sony V. So um, I, I thought I was very clear because I've got no questions uh, so far. So um, thank you very much uh, for your interest. Um, this uh, webinar was recorded, so you will receive uh, a link to the video soon from uh, marketing. 
So don't hesitate to contact me if you need further questions or further demo for your customers. Thank you very much for your time and have a nice afternoon.